So I'm hoping that you can see. Well, I've, I've opened it up a bit, so push the camera right the way back so you can see um, a bit more of the space that I've got now. And so you can also see the Gibraltar racking that normally lives in my studio. Now, my studio has been broken down because obviously I've, I've moved house. Uh, and because of that, all this stuff is in storage. But I thought this was probably a good point because it has been broken down for you guys to see how easy this stuff is to put together. So my racking is a three tier rack. So my top tier, middle tier, bottom tier. Bottom tier normally has one of my big keyboards, one of my big boards on it. Um, typically it will have a Kronos, it will have an AAT, it will have my Jupiter, which is actually sitting here, um, just off camera. Uh, let me grab my, which is still a heavy beast. So there, oh, there's my Jupiter, which is sitting here, because I'm using it. Uh, let me just get rid of that for a second. Ooh. Oh, I just put it on my toe. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> um, uh, or an A80 or a T1. One of my big boards sits on the bottom, and then various other synthesizers sort of sit on the racking above it, depending on what's rotating in and out of the studio at the time. So for those three tiers and heavy racking, it breaks down into effectively five pieces, okay? So we have these two bits, okay? These are the cross members for tier three and tier two. And I'll go through these. I'll, I will, once I've put it up and down, I will then go through these things. But effectively, that is where the uh, synthesizers on T T1 and T2, and I always have more synthesizers on T1 and T2 than I have on the tier one. And the reason for that is very, very simply because I can. Um, by buying uh, the long poles, and these are about two meters in length, as you can see, I'm about 1.8 uh, meters. Uh, and these are really useful, and you can position these things any point you like along these, and I will go through that in a minute. But let me put those to one side. Da, 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 da. One, two, sit. And then what we have oops, is these two bits, OK? Uh, and these are the legs. Oops, hit the seat. Oops. Uh, these are the legs, OK? So that's one, that's one side, uh, and that's the other side. And they would normally be the other way around. Um, but they're the legs, OK? So they're the side pieces. So that's four pieces of the rack that you can see. Like so. And then the last piece is this bit here, which is um, nice to have, but it's a cross member, and it actually makes the, the stand quite rigid and actually helps you get it up and down very quickly. OK, so you'll see that in a minute. Now, so uh, in terms of the racking itself, the racking tends to have two types of joint on it. Okay, so it has this type of joint. Okay, so that type of joint there. Uh, and I will take a photograph of this so you can see it and put it up in the corner of the screen. Um, and these are effectively uh, just joints with a uh, Allen key as assembled on it, onto it. Okay, so it's permanently it's been welded onto there. Uh, clamping pole. So let me do, take this, bring this to the camera so you can see it. So effectively, open up, pole goes in there, clamp in like that, give it a twist, locks in place. Okay, that's the one type. Right, let me put this down over here. And then we have a second type of connector. And this is the second type of connector, okay? And these have uh, a very simple four-sided bolt on them. And I think you can just about see that on camera. Um, they go like that, and then you tighten these up, okay? Pole goes in there, slope like that, and you tighten them up. Uh, 
two types of connector. One you can do with your finger. The second you will need a couple of tools for. Okay, that's tool number one, which is a Gibraltar. There you go. Put it up to the camera. That's a Gibraltar ratchet. So it will go one way, just like a normal socket set set would be. And the second tool that is really useful is a Gibraltar wing key. So effectively it has the square on that side and a wing key so that you can tighten and untighten. But you will need those and I will put those up in the top corner so you can see what they look like. So how do we get the racking set up? Well, the first thing about the racking is in certain points in the racking, you will notice these things have been attached. Okay, These are collars. Okay, This is a Gibraltar collar and you attach it to the racking at certain points. And what that means is that when I slide the cross member onto there, it will sit at that level on both sides of the racking, which means very quickly I can get the cross member in, get the cross member tightened and get this thing up and running. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to put these in my back pocket. Okay, back pocket. And I'm now going to put the rack together so you can see how quickly this thing goes together. Right, so as you can see, all I've done is put the cross member in. That took me about a minute. And it's now released up the higher tiers, which I just open up like so. And now I can introduce my cross members. So there is one.
There you go. That took me, what, all of five minutes to have an extremely sturdy <laughs> keyboard stand on stage. So people have asked me how quickly can you do it. That's how quickly you can do it. So when I travel around, I keep the side pieces as they are, as you saw. I take these pieces off and I take the brace off. Job done. To break down, you go the other way. Now, obviously, when you put this on stage, you might want to just take the ratchet and tighten it up even more to give it much more firmer. And the other thing is maybe what you saw me doing there, which you can't really see on camera at the moment, is I have actually little marks that I've put on with uh, indelible marker on the side of the poles that basically tells me where it needs to be, where this pole needs to be in reference to this um, joint or connector. And it also tells me the orientation of this tier. So this is set up for me. So i would be setting up playing this, playing that, playing that. Okay, so it's set up for me, set up for my height and how I want the keyboard set up. So all I've done is I've just put a little marker in there, very simple, uh, that says when I break this down, this is how I want it to go back together. And every time I put this back together, it does the same. It looks the same, it feels the same. I don't have to go back around trying to adjust it. So that's how long it took to get up. How long does it take to get down? So this is really important at the end of the night when somebody with butterfingers doesn't drop the key. But at the end of the night, you want to go home. How long does it take to get the racking undone? And because I'm doing this on camera, of course, I'm fumbling this. So out comes hole number one. comes pole number two. So they can go off, your roadie can take those off to the van for you. And this is probably normally where it's quite a good idea to have two of you doing this, not just one person. But you just effectively unclip that from that side. Out comes side number one. And you do the same over here. That. There's, the, there's the cross member out. Oops. And there you go, side number two. And that's the Gibraltar racking broken down. So even quicker to break down than it was to put together. Well, that's what I like to think anyway. Um, so, some specifics about this stuff. So, as I said, you need a couple of tools to do this. Um, I'll bring this a little bit closer so you can see it. So these things are what Gibraltar call uh, keyboard connectors. Okay, and I brought it close to the camera so you can see it, but of course it chops me off a bit. Uh, but it's easier to do it this way. So these are really, really useful. Effectively, your keyboard sits between the two rubber stops, whatever keyboard you're using. Now, I can tell you that this, that would be my MX1, would sit in there, so it's not quite a keyboard length. Whereas this one here would be for my M1, uh, or was my M1 anyway. Now these are really, really brilliant idea because you can put multiple pieces of equipment in there and you can move where they are on the stand to fit the equipment. And to move them, if you look at the back, you've got a wing nut. Undo the weed nut like so, slide it on, get it to where you want it, there you go, 
and do it up. And you do it up really tight and that will never move. That's solid on there. Then when you put the piece of equipment on here, these things have like a, uh, effectively like a nut. Move up and down. Once you get the side, the, the width to what you need for your, the piece of equipment you're putting in there, all you do is you literally just turn the top until it's solid and that won't move. It's good, isn't it? So that is why I think this racking is so useful because it, it is so versatile for keyboardists as they change their rigs over the years. They don't have to come by a new racking. All they need to do is move these things around up and down the poles. And as I said, one of the things I found very, very useful about this is uh, the fact that I can have these long poles on it and I can have a synthesizer and a mixer and a drum machine and a uh, in-ears device. I don't need to use in-ears, but you sort of get my drift. You can have lots of pieces of equipment sitting on these um, as they go down. And the second thing is, on stage, these things look amazing because they're all chrome, you know, and as long as you've polished them up and get rid of all sweaty finger marks and what have you. When the lights come down onto these things or you're getting your, you know, your spotlight onto your keyboard player, they just light up. They look the dog's doodars. Right, they don't look like any other stand on stage. They just because they're chrome, they just light up. All the lights reflect off them, I and you look like some sort of Rick Wakeman, which is of course what we all want to look like is Rick Wakeman. Um, well, we all want to play like Rick Wakeman anyway, personally. Um, so that's how the keyboards lock into these things. Um, as I said. They have various knuckles. They have various components actually um, in the in the Gibraltar range. There is a component that I haven't got here um, because I don't tend to use it. But it's a component that actually sits on the side of one of these. And what it effectively does is it's, a, it's on a curved bar uh, with a bigger, much much tighter curve than this. And effectively, what it has is it has a stand that comes up straight up from here to the level of the keyboard plier. And you can move it round and back, which is really, really quite useful. It's it's sort of, you put a collar on the stand, like I've got these collars down here that give me my locators. And you put a collar on the stand and effectively this thing moves round on that collar. And you can have your laptop or another device that you can swing in and out. It's really quite useful, except I've got no use to it in the studio. So I sort of bought it, I used it for a bit, and then I've stopped using it. Um, but it is another useful piece of equipment. Anyway, what I thought was really interesting is to run you through that. And the last piece I'm going to show you is these things. Okay, these are in the Gibraltar catalog feet. Okay, they go on the bottom, they're meant to go on the bottom of the, the stand. That goes on the floor, they stop the thing moving. Now I've got some really big industrial Gibraltar feet on these things. Once they're on the floor, they ain't moving anywhere. I can assure you of that. So why have I got these things? These things, if you turn them up the wrong way and put them on a stand like that, okay, they form a really, really sturdy base for putting a synthesizer on. And in actual fact, this is the, this is the tier one, and the tier one looks like that normally in situ uh, and my synthesizer sits across those two on either end and again I can push the synthesizer like that yeah, well I can play it heavy handedly and it does not move although they move quite easily when they've got no load on them hopefully that has been informative for you if it hasn't blame the management until next time see you later if you liked the content of the video you've just seen please give it a thumbs up. Just helps the YouTube algorithm with its selection process. If you want to leave a comment, please feel free to do that as well. Um, down below somewhere should be the ability to do that. Um, I do try to respond to all the comments that are raised on the channel. Uh, sometimes it takes me a few weeks because of what I'm doing and I'm getting more and more and more comments and uh, 
questions raised on the channel, so it just takes sometimes a little bit of time to do a bit of research. If you want to be notified when I put more rants, mailbergs, and videos about this sort of legacy tech and even modern tech on the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell icon, and you'll be notified by YouTube when stuff happens. I try to publish at least two times a week, sometimes more, sometimes less. Until next time, bye-bye.